Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A blessed Christmas to you and your family as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. At Christmas, we celebrate God giving us the gift of his Son, Jesus. And as a way to celebrate the gift that God gives to us, we also exchange gifts. We receive gifts. We give gifts. We look for that, that perfect gift to give for the people who are near and dear to us. And, and sometimes that takes time, doesn't it? And sometimes we wait until the very last minute to find that perfect gift, even on Christmas Eve. And I know some of you do that. I bumped into you in the stores this morning. (laughs) (laughs) And when we find that perfect gift, how do we give it? We don't just purchase the perfect gift and hand it to the person. We don't just take that gift and place it under the tree. No, we take that gift. We take the time to wrap it. To build the anticipation. Until the time is right for the person to receive it, to open it up and receive it with joy and excitement. The gift you have given. That's what we see in a Holy Scripture. God wrapping up a gift for us. And the wrapping of God's gift is important. Because the wrapping shows the kind of gift that it will be. Or the purpose that that gift will serve in our lives. And to help us understand how God is doing this, I brought gifts this evening. Two gifts, and as we think about these two gifts, I'd like you to to think about which gift would you like your name to be on. Now, now some of you may not be able to see it, but one gift is nicely wrapped, ribbon on top. One gift, in plastic bags, thrown together. If these gifts were under your tree, which one would you want your name to be on? Now, of course, on Christmas Eve, as these gifts are for a sermon illustration, you know there is a catch, don't you? (laughs) You know which one you should choose, but which ones do we like to choose? Which gifts do we like to receive as people? And so often the gifts that we like to to receive are the ones who are wrapped up elegantly, the ones that look fancy, the ones that look valuable and important, and the temptation is to go after those gifts. To go after the gifts that look nice and are pleasing to the eye, and we reach out and receive those gifts with excitement and joy. You know, the same thing happened in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan held out a gift for God's children that looked pleasing to the eye with the fruit. And Adam and Eve there in the Garden of Eden, they took and ate. They thought they were receiving a gift. And what did it leave them? Empty. Dead in sin. And isn't that the temptation we still battle with today? As people on this earth, we see gifts that look good and pleasing to the eye. We can't wait to open them with excitement and joy. And when we open them, it seems exciting for the moment. But then it leaves us empty. What kind of gift are you looking for? What kind of things in this world are your eyes set on to bring satisfaction, to bring joy, 
to bring whatever it is our hearts and lives desire. Sometimes as as people in this world, our hearts and desires are having more wealth and riches in, and you'd be thrilled to find a lottery ticket in the gift until you learn that its numbers didn't match up and you're left empty. And that hope, that excitement fades away. Or maybe the thing that we desire and want in this world is some recognition, some attention, some popularity. And we strive to go after and earn those things. And the world rewards it. But it also doesn't last. Case in point, who won the World Series three years ago? Or the Super Bowl five years ago? that glory and that fame seems to fade away. Or maybe to hit a little bit closer to home at Christmas time, (coughs) maybe there is a gift you want. Maybe there is something you're hoping for and desiring for, and you receive it. And it tastes good for the moment. But it also leaves you empty. If you can't see it, it's an empty glass. What was the gift you desired last year? (coughs) What was the present you were hoping for last year? And now that excitement and joy of that gift is empty. And we long and yearn for more. You see, that's the problem with the gifts of this world. They seem pleasing and exciting to our eyes. It seems like there will be hope and worth and value in these gifts. And what we find is that they leave us empty. Yearning for more. We find that the wrapping was a mirage. It was a lie. That leaves us empty not with the gifts of God. The gift that God gives us that we celebrate today with the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus to the world doesn't seem very glamorous. To the world, this gift of a baby born in a stable in Bethlehem doesn't seem significant at all, doesn't seem to have any worth, value, popularity, influence, doesn't seem to be anything significant to bring happiness or joy to people's lives. And yet, the way God wraps His gift points us to the fulfillment of His Word. The way God wraps His gift shows us the value of that gift given to us long ago in the town of Bethlehem. What was that gift? It's the readings that we've been having this evening in worship. Specifically, I draw your attention to Luke chapter 2, verse 7, where we are told that Mary and Joseph, they travel to Bethlehem. Not the capital city of Jerusalem. No, it's a backwater kind of town, a lowly place. They are visiting because of the census that requires them to go to their hometown to register. They look for a place to to stay for the evening, and the inn, the hotel, is full. So they're given a stable, dark, dirty stable. And yet when God's time was right, he brought a gift. Verse 7 says, And she, Mary, brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And here we hear about this gift of a baby, and the wrapping is described. The wrapping of a baby boy, born in flesh and blood, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, is the gift that God gives to us, to all of the world, to celebrate. 
Because in this gift, how it is wrapped shows us who he is. We hear that declared with the angels. As they go to the shepherds who are keeping watch over the flocks by night, and they declare in Luke chapter 2, verse 9 and following, they say, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And with these words, the angels begin to open up and unwrap this present from God, this gift from God to show what this gift with this baby, who this baby is. And who is this babe? He is Christ the Lord. The one promised long ago in Holy Scripture. As the first reading we had tonight declared, the Word became flesh, the very Word written in Holy Scripture, the Word that God spoke that brought all things into creation, as John says in chapter 1, is the Word that has become flesh. God has sent His Son, Jesus, and has wrapped Him in flesh and blood, skin Bones, muscles, hair like you and I have. God has given us a gift that is wrapped up in a person like you and me. Why? So he can take on the sins of people like you and me. So he can take our place in suffering and death. So we can receive his glory and his forgiveness and his life eternal. We also see that in this birth narrative. Mary wrapped him, wrapped baby Jesus, that fine, soft, smooth skin of a baby boy. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths. What is that? Swaddling cloths Ordinary, everyday cloths. Pieces of linen that were wrapped around a little baby. It's something that was common in the day of Mary and Joseph to wrap baby in babies in swaddling cloths. But those cloths were not only used in birth. They're also used in death. In burial. And here we see a baby wrapped in pieces of clothing to show the kind of gift he would be. That even in death, his body would be wrapped with pieces of clothing. As we're told in John chapter 20, verses 6 and 7. When we find the wrapping of Jesus, the cloth of Jesus lying there in the empty tomb, it was wrapped him up in death. And yet Jesus, this child, this son of God, came not to be wrapped up in swaddling cloths or death cloths. No, he came to be wrapped up in our sin. Crowned with a crown of thorns, nailed to a cross to suffer and die for us so that we could be wrapped up, not in swaddling cloths, but in robes of righteousness and purity and holiness, and the innocence of this babe born in Bethlehem that was crucified, died, and risen, gives us his purity and his life as promised in the waters of baptism so that we may be covered in his righteousness, in his holiness, in his forgiveness, and we see it in the wrapping of this babe in Bethlehem. And God wraps up his son, Jesus, to show us who he will be. 
our Savior, who came to forgive us, who came to die in our place that we may be holy, perfect, innocent in God's sight. And Mary wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. A manger. A place where livestock came to be fed. A place where livestock came to eat. So also our Savior shows us what he has come to do. He comes to feed us. He comes to feed us here at his altar where he gives us his body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. And this food strengthens our life and our faith. It gives us the assurance of eternal life in God's kingdom. It is, it is his cup that satisfies. It is his cup of salvation that feeds us, that gives us hope and joy and the assurance of eternal life. And we see it wrapped up in this babe in Bethlehem. A gift from God that doesn't seem to be too glamorous or glitzy in the eyes of the world. But to people of faith, we see a Savior. We see God's word fulfilled from the prophets of old in this baby Jesus. We see a baby Jesus who was born to die for us and bring us forgiveness eternal life and righteousness in God's sight. And until we have that gift for eternity, we have a Savior who feeds us with His Word as written in Holy Scripture. A Savior who feeds us with His sacrament, His body and blood served here at His altar. And as God's children, we recognize the gift with eyes of faith. A gift from God, wrapped in Holy Scripture, wrapped in bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins. May we this Christmas thank God for the gift he has wrapped for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace which surpasses our understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We worship the Lord by giving our offerings and gifts. We also sing the hymn.